Hey everyone, I'm joined by Catherine, the Senior Product Manager for Azure Cache for Redis, where she'll show us how to instantly build a scalable web application within Azure. You won't want to miss it. Hey Catherine, I've been hearing a lot that you heard from customers that they've been taking a long time to develop apps and they're experiencing a ton of slowdown. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the app is taking extra long to respond to web requests and the database queries are just super slow. Awesome. So I heard that you've been uh, developing a quick deploy template that's now available within the Azure Marketplace that allows for developers to build web applications that are scalable, more resilient, and much faster using a database and Azure Cache for Redis. So let's jump into what that actually looks like. So the very first thing that we wanted to focus on was compatibility to make sure that this template can adapt to a variety of databases and programming languages to ensure that it's super easy for anybody to use. So on the screen here, we have some of the databases that the web app template is compatible with from Azure SQL to Postgres SQL, MySQL, and even Azure Cosmos DB from MongoDB. And below there, we've listed some of the compatible languages such as Java, .NET, Python, and much more um, that this template is uh, able to work upon. And next, let's start talking about some of the use cases that we can use this template for, such as session store, managing your frequently accessed data, managing your microservices, acting as a message broker, leveraging as a leaderboard for ranking and player um, analytics, and also leveraging it as a content cache. So I feel like I've talked enough. Catherine, let's jump into your demo um, to take a look at this in action. Thanks, Ricky. Um, so like Ricky said earlier, we built this web app and database plus cache template for customers to easily provision their environment in a fast and a secure way. And it's compatible with a bunch of scenarios. Uh, where to find this template? In Azure portal, if we say create a resource and then search for web app plus database, okay, it shows up as top search result. So this template, if we say create, it will bring me to this create new resource page where um, really with minimal input, like um, my subscriptions pre-selected, I can say create a new resource group, test the web app one, two, three. And then I'll give the name to my web app in this case, uh, web app. First round review. Okay, that part. Uh, my web app works with Python and Postgres SQL. So in this case, I select the Python, latest Python framework. So noticing after I give the input for my web app, there's a database section, um, the engine, server name, everything's already pre-filled based on my web app selection. Because I was using Python framework, um, the Postgres SQL was automatically selected because that's the one that works the best with Python. And there's a section for Azure Cache for Redis. Like, would you like to add Azure Cache for Redis in your environment? Uh, let's just say yes, because we want our app to be scalable, to run faster, and not storing the session state in memory, especially because uh, external distributed cache can enable the app to scale out. Yeah. Oh, Catherine, I had one quick question for you um, while you selected that Azure cache. Um, sure. What is the benefit between using a Redis cache versus caching in memory with your database? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I briefly mentioned it earlier, but then if we store your data cached in memory of the web server, in the case of scaling up or scaling down, the in-memory data will not go with the extra web server. So uh, we really want to make the cache data external. So it doesn't matter how many instances of the server I have, they can access the same distributed cache with all the historical data. Otherwise, it's supposed if we have like five servers and in two of the servers, we have some um, data from specific user sessions. 
now if I decide to scale it down to three servers, then the two servers with the caching data will be gone and the data will be lost. So that's not resilient for uh, modern cloud web applications. Gotcha, thank you. Okay, great question, Ricky. Um, so after all the input here, uh, let's just uh, create the template. We'll go through a quick review validation stage where like the network configurations input are all being validated. Uh, and then I can hit create here. So now boom, uh, everything's running, provisioning in Azure. And the noticing even if we just give input on web app, cache and the database, this template is a secure by default. That means we provision everything within a virtual network and the connectivity is secured by private endpoint, uh, pri private DNS zones and so on. So it's a very good uh, template, even for your production usage. Great, awesome. Now, um, it may take a few minutes. So for the sake of your time, uh, I have one tem uh, resource template pre-provisioned. Um, this is about a restaurant review app, uh, Python and the Django framework. So here I can see all the uh, restaurants, users entered and the related ratings. Um, I like fast food. So here are all the popular brands here, not all, but some of them. So um, firstly noticing, uh, because earlier I was viewing the Burger King restaurant and uh, we have a session, user session specific feature to tell the user which restaurant did you just view in case the user wants to go back to that restaurant uh, to learn more details. So uh, let's see if I view KFC right now. Then I go back. So last view the restaurant will be KFC. Um, also, like when people go to different restaurant details, like if we have a lot of users accessing the same website, uh, we may want to cache the page output so the loading time and uh, will be faster. Also, we save the trip calling into the PostgreSQL database. Uh, so like it doesn't have to take long running the queries and so on. Everything will be uh, instantly returned from the cache. This is my uh, Redis cache instance. So just uh, to let you know that I wasn't lying to you, everything was indeed in the cache. If I run a query to list all the to list all the uh, entries in cache. You'll see here are the cached entries, um, sessions or the page output. So let's just view uh, the content of the page output as an example. Maybe because, um, let me refresh again. There's a time I put on the caching. So um, because earlier the console was a little bit slow, uh, some of the content will expire. And that's actually a nice feature to make sure all your cache entries are up to date in case if people make any changes. So now um, if I run the keys again, then I'll try to get um, some of the entries, hope this one will work. Okay, so uh, here are some entries uh, cached uh, as part of the page output. Gotcha. One question um, that I have for you, Catherine, is um, we can't read any of these cache values um, on the screen. Right. Is there any specific reason why for that? Yeah, uh, because uh, in the Django framework, there's a feature uh, called like compression. Uh, basically, like the output of the content may be really large in size, but meanwhile, a lot of the web servers now have advanced um, 
compute power. So we would cache the output page content. Uh, sorry, we would zip the output page content to compress it. So we save some network bandwidth and also saving the storage within cache itself. So uh, that's a very nice programming framework and also an example of how uh, Azure can work with all the modern development tools. Awesome. And we can actually take a take a look. So it's more visual uh, for you to understand what I was referring to. So in the cache configuration, I could specify a compressor setting which uh, indicates which library to use to comprise the content. So uh, it was really easy for me to uh, code all this app. Um, this app earlier was only using web app and the Postgres, and it didn't really take me a lot of effort to add a cache to it. Um, so what I did was uh, in the configuration file, I indicate um, these are the cache settings. And then um, I added the cache middleware to this application. Yeah, and then uh, in the views page, uh, the output cache feature we saw earlier was just easily added by this tag. So cache page, uh, I gave a time for the cache entry to stay up to date. And then for the sessions, I could configure the session middleware first and then just uh, use it uh, transparently with cache as the backend. Gotcha. So more, the most important question I have for you is, does this mean that I don't have to rewrite my entire application just to add in a cache and use this template? Yeah, exactly. I think that's a very good, um, good point. So uh, it's not like I had to rewrite the entire app, re-architect it for all the output or the session data to be um, included in cache. Uh, I could reuse a lot of the existing uh, programming APIs and then cache uh, is like at the configuration level for a lot of the features. For example, it, it can be the backend of the session. Um, it can just be a store for the output cache. So uh, I didn't have to rewrite any code and it's minimal amount of code I add in order to make this app work with caching in Azure. Awesome, that's great. Thank you for all of your help and, and showcasing that demo, Catherine. It was really, really helpful. Um, thank you again for watching this episode of Open at Microsoft. If you wanted to learn more about the template that Catherine showed or anything else about Azure Cache Redis, please check out any of the links in the description below and have a great rest of your day.